friends, I'm so glad to be able to do this video for you. Uh, we've really been missing seeing you guys at school, and um, this is going to be fun. So it'll be almost like we're together. So I'm going to start our morning with a little bit of a circle time like we usually do in our classroom. Let's start with a hello song. I'm so glad Caleb's here. I'm so glad Alexi's here. I'm so glad Aliza's here. Hey, hey, what a great day. I'm so glad Abigail's here. I'm so glad Chase is here. I'm so glad Connor is here. Hey, hey, what a great day. I'm so glad Hannah is here. I'm so glad Marley is here. I'm so glad Trina is here. Hey, hey, what a great day. I'm so glad Stella is here. I'm so glad Sammy R's here. I'm so glad Samuel is here. Hey, hey, what a great day. I'm so glad Milan is here. I'm so glad Miss Prieto is here. I'm so glad everyone's here. Hey, hey, what a great day. All right, that was awesome. I really miss you seeing you guys and I loved being able to say your names and hope you're watching this video so you can see the fun things that we're gonna do. We're gonna start with um, our Pledge of Allegiance and if you remember our Pledge of Allegiance is making a promise to be a good friend to our country. This is our American flag. It is the um, symbol for our country which is the United States of America. And we start off by putting our hand, our right hand, over our heart. And then we always look at the flag when we say the pledge. And it goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very well done. I hope you guys practice that because when you get to kindergarten, you're going to be doing that every morning. All right, so our first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to have some fun with plastic eggs. You might have these around your house, but if you don't have any of these around your house, you could use other things like Legos or plastic cups or plastic bowls or whatever you have around your home. I just had a bunch of these eggs and since it was just Easter time, maybe you have some too. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stack egg towers. We're gonna start by turning them all over and see if we have a match for everyone. That's a good thing to, for you guys to practice doing is sorting your eggs. You can sort them by colors and put all the purples together and the yellows together and the greens and the pinks and the oranges and blue. We're just turning them all over. And if you notice, when you have a plastic egg, let me get one that matches, one end is pointed and one end is rounded. So the bottom of the egg is rounded shape and the top of the egg is a pointed shape. So you need a pointed shape and a rounded shape to fit together to make the whole egg, just like that. So what we're gonna do is separate the pointy tops. Do, 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 we're separating all the pointy tops and putting all the rounded tops, uh, roundy bottoms over here. Because when you stack them, it's easier to stack them if you stack the, the bottom parts and the top parts separately. All right, so we're gonna start by stacking. And we, when we stack, that's a pointy top, I think. When we stack, we wanna see how many we can get to stand up without falling over. This one has a little thing inside it that keeps it from stacking very well. Let's see. We wanna see how many we can stack up. Oops, they're starting to fall over. I wonder how we could keep them from falling over. If you look at this one, it's kind of leaning crooked from the very beginning. So if we straightened it up and stacked everything straight, I think we'll be able to get more on top of each other. 
Let's see. Let's let's try it. Let's just see if we went a little bit crooked. What would happen? Well, yep, yeah, that's what happens when you go a little bit crooked. So let's see if we can stack them straight from the very start and see if that helps them stay straighter. When you're all done stacking them up as high as you can go, then you can count them and work on practicing your numbers. <clears throat> Whoops, Mrs. Bishop made a boo-boo. I bet you are better at this than Mrs. Bishop is. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go, it's going straight. And straighten them like this. I wanna see if I can get all of the ones on my tray that are the bottoms all together before they fall over. Nope, that's a pointed one. <clears throat> pointed one. I think I, oh, no, that one has a little plastic piece inside it. They don't work very well when they have a little plastic piece inside. Well, I think I've almost done it. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I got seventeen in my tower. And now it falls over. So maybe you might get more than seventeen in your tower. So just try it at home. Be a lot, if you have eggs, um, eggs laying around your house, that'd be a fun thing for you to do. All right, so for the last thing we're gonna do today is I'm gonna read you a story that my daughter loved when she was a little girl. And it's called Rechenka's Eggs by Patricia Polacco. So it's got some funny words in here that I'm gonna tell you what they mean. Cause this is a story um, about a lady from another country. <clears throat> Their words are not always the same. So it's about a lady named Babushka. And babushka means little old lady or grandmother in um, Polish or Russian. So I believe this story takes place in Russia, which is another country far from here. Babushka lived alone in a dacha, which is a little house in the country. She was known far and wide for the fine eggs that she lovingly painted. Her eggs were so beautiful that she always won first prize at the Easter festival in Moscow. Each day she would take the shell of an egg from her basket and paint it in a wonderful design using the shapes of stars and flowers, triangles and circles. Through the long cold winter she painted. Then one day after a snowstorm, Babushka went outside. She could still hear the faint sound of falling snow. It was a sound like soft rain. Herds of caribou came to feed at Babushka's because the grasses they usually ate were covered with snow. A miracle, she whispered as she fed some. These wild things have found their way to me. So these are caribou. And if you remember, we talked about caribou before and there, uh, another word for caribou was reindeer. Just then, a flock of noisy geese honked loudly overhead. As they glided over the snow, one of them faltered and fell from the sky. Babushka went to where the goose lay crumpled in the snow. A hunter did this, Babushka grumbled. She carefully picked up the goose and took it back to her little house. There she fed the little goose from her own table and put the goose in her best basket lined with warm, uh, the warmest quilt from her own bed. I shall name you a good name. One that we both can like, eh, my little friend, she said, as she patted the geese's head. How do you like Rachenka? Yes, then Rachenka it shall be. With Babushka's care, Rachenka grew stronger as each day passed. To repay her kindness, she laid an egg for breakfast every morning. As Rachenka got better, she waddled around the little house, exploring every nook, cupboard, and corner. One day, she jumped on top of Babushka's work table, overturning the jars of bright colored paint that she used to color her eggs. 
Nit! Babushka screamed as she chased the goose with a broom. No! The frightened goose flapped her wings to go away and knocked over the basket of eggs that Babushka had lovingly painted. The eggs crashed onto the floor and shattered into millions of pieces. They were both very sad. There was no reason now for Babushka to go to the festival. The next morning, Babushka slowly got out of bed and trundled over to Rachenka's basket to get her morning egg. But when she reached into the middle of the quilt, she picked out the most brilliantly colored egg that she had ever seen. A miracle, Babushka whispered. A miracle. Wow, so did Rachenka lay, lay a painted egg? Hmm, let's find out. She made small holes at both ends of the egg and blew the yolk and white into a dish to cook and eat later for breakfast. Then she held the egg up to the morning light and marveled at its beauty. After that, every morning for 12 mornings, there was another egg, each more beautiful than the one the day before. Soon Babushka had, cut, had enough eggs to take to the festival, festival in Moskva. How wonderful, she thought. A miracle has replaced the eggs that were broken. Spring is here, my little friend, Babushka said to Rachenka the morning of the festival. Now you will be flying up north with your flock. She bustled to the hearth fire and brewed some of her most favored tea. They shared a saucer of tea with a sweet Easter bread. She covered each piece with pashka, a spread of cheese, butter, and raisins. They savored each bit together. One for you and one for me, Babushka exclaimed. Da, da, my little friend. I shall surely miss you, but you are a wild thing, and a miracle sent you to me. It would not be right to ask you to stay here with me forever. When Babushka left her little house, she took one last look at Rachenka sitting on the doorstep. She waved, then took determined steps for Moscow with the basket of her precious eggs. She crossed the valley where the caribou mothers were walking their newborn calves. A miracle, she thought. New little lives, a miracle. She crossed the bridge over the Moskva River and soon she could see the domes of old Moskva. The festival was bright and exciting. There were goat carts selling coolidge, processions, dancers, jugglers, and laughing children playing and running. Babushka showed her old friends the eggs. Her eggs are the most beautiful in all of Russia, they thought. Look at them, the elders said. They almost glow, as if the paint is part of the shell itself. The judges picked Babushka's eggs as the most beautiful. Babushka was so happy. She beamed as she looked at the first prize, a feather bed quilt. Wow, look at that beautiful quilt that she won. As Babushka made her way homeward, a honking flock of geese flew overhead. Babushka gave them a long, lingering look. She wondered if Rachenko was one of them. I wonder if Rachenko's up there. That night, Babushka was awakened from a sound sleep by an ever so small sound. It was coming from Rachenko's basket. She hobbled closer and saw a glorious egg, but this one was different from all of the others. It quivered and moved. It made tiny muffled sounds. The egg jumped, bumped, rolled and pitched in the basket. Can you see what's in there? Then there was a crack and Babushka could see the very special gift that Rachenka had left for her. All a miracle, Babushka said, and this little goose remained with Babushka always. So Rachenka laid an egg with the baby goose in it and left it for Babushka to raise and love and care for. And that, my friends, is the end of our story and the end of our time together. Mrs. Prieto has a message for you at the end of my video, and you will see her as well. Bye. See you soon.